Now today we're going to talk about how a man bonds with a woman. And let me just say this, there are some healthy ways a man can bond with a woman and some unhealthy ways a man can bond with a woman. And let me just share with you why I wanted to do this video. I was actually watching a show on Apple TV called The Morning Show. And in it, it's got uh, Jennifer Aniston, Reese Witherspoon, Steve Carell. They're in the news business and uh, there's a scandal that goes on in the show. And why I wanted to bring this up is that uh, one of the news anchors played by Steve Carell is basically a sexual predator. And what he does is he takes advantage of the women uh, that are beneath him. Um, I don't like saying it that way. I meant subordinate, excuse me, uh, from a professional standpoint. And basically coerces them into sex. Now, why am I bringing this up? Oh, and by the way, now there's another character who's a, a weather person. And he begins a consensual relationship with one of the women who is also uh, in a subordinate position. Okay. Why is this important? Okay, <laughs> I feel like I'm repeating myself. In the case of Steve Carell, he talks about his unhappy marriage. He talks about his unhappy marriage with uh, some of the women as a way to gain sympathy from them. Okay, as a way of gaining sympathy, as a way to have them connect with them, have these women bond with him. So what's happening in this particular case He's using sympathy as a way to bond, which is one of the unhealthy ways. Now, we see this in the dating, mating, relating realm when a divorced man and woman connect. And oftentimes they're connecting with each other through their trauma bond, their trauma bond. And what I mean to say is they're talking about their unhappy experiences in their marriages as a way to feel a sense of familiarity, as a feel of sense of safety, as to feel a sense of trust, a sense of trust, because it's a shared experience. And while it might not be that they shared the exact experience, the experience of an unhappy marriage. Now, given that my audience is midlife, which is after baby making years and before retirement, roughly 75% of those in that age demographic are divorced. So in many cases, we see this. Now, we see this also in the long distance dating where there's a lot of communication via the tele, well, that's not a telephone, is it? A smartphone. They're bonding through their phones and it's usually through this trauma bond. And this is one of the unhealthy ways a man might temporarily bond with a woman. Because in the case of the TV show, he will use women, sleep with them, and never talk to them again. And it's a very awkward environment at the place they work. Now, then there's another character. I, I talked to you about this news, uh, this weather person. Now, he meets someone in a consensual way. Now, where they bonded was both in the space of proximity. Proximity. In other words, they were in the same environment. Okay. Now, this is critically important for bonding, is to have regular connection with someone. Now, a lot of women think that men bond over the telephone in these long distance dynamics. And long distance these days can actually be anything that's more than an hour drive to see one another. So it's not necessarily always the traveling by airplane long distance. Now, why am I bringing this up? Because the vast majority of dating experiences today are with people that live literally outside of your proximity. Now, in the case of the consensual relationship where they began bonding was she was very attracted to his mind. He was a nerd. And so it wasn't on that emotional sense that they bonded. They actually bonded through an intellectual sense. In other words, through each other's mind. Now, today we call this sapiosexual. Now, that's certainly a way a man can bond with a woman when there's that regular proximity and that sharing of ideas, sharing of ideas. Now, what I want to lean in today, if you're seeking a healthy, happy partnership type relationship, let me just be clear with everyone. I'm not a coach that focuses on casual relationship. I'm not a coach that focuses on situationships with friends with benefits. My whole coaching is centered around those who seek genuine partnership with someone. Where like my beloved
Kevin and I, where you either live together or you're in a capacity of considering marriage or something truly substantial. And in these particular cases, the men who genuinely want a serious, committed relationship with someone, the men who want partnership with someone, these men need the following for them to actually bond with a woman, to actually... Now, we oftentimes think of bonding as the sexual experiences, like what I talked in the case earlier, but it's not sex where we bond with a woman. It's certainly an area where we feel a strong connection with a woman and we men and women have sexual desires and it is a way to bond from the physical sense. I'm talking about bonding beyond the physical sense. I'm talking about bonding on that emotional level. And what every man and woman needs to make this happen, well, first and foremost, they need a minimum of 100 hours of face-to-face -face time to experience the first level of trust. And trust isn't just about fidelity. Trust is, does this person care about my feelings as much as my own? Does this person have my best interest at hand? It takes about 100 hours of face-to-face -face time to make that a reality. And in that 100 hours of FaceTime and beyond the 100 hours of FaceTime, face to FaceTime, excuse me, um, just thinking about FaceTime for the telephone, or excuse me, smartphone, I'm talking about face to FaceTime, is shared activities, hobbies, mutual interest, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, and teamwork building skills both in your personal and your professional life. This helps build the deep roots of trust, the deep roots of trust that allows a man to bond with a woman and vice versa because ultimately a relationship that is built on trust. And here's the thing, it's incredibly difficult to build trust over the smartphone or through your thumbs, so, excuse me, I was gonna type, you know, because people, but people don't use laptops anymore, they use their smartphones to communicate with one another. Men don't bond through that medium. We might temporarily feel a level of attachment, and certainly we might feel a level of, of familiarity with a person, but ultimately, where a man bonds is through these experiences. And so coming back to the TV show with the two people that were in a consensual relationship, when it was found out, the man wanted to now be able to take her out to dinners and do activities with her. He said he wants to show her off to people. And why this is critically important is to recognize that a man who has a secretive relationship with you or a relationship where you're not in that same proximity where you're actively spending regular time together, it's gonna to be incredibly difficult to actually bond with this person for a long-term commitment. And here's the real kicker in all of this. Folks, many of you have fallen into the trap of more communication via the telephone than actual face-to-face -face time with a man. Face-to-face -face time. In fact, this is the habitual problem, believing that you're bonding with one another. And in most cases, it's a weak level of bonding, or worse, as I shared in the beginning of this, it's a trauma version of bonding. And ultimately, those relationships tend to fizzle out especially with one when a man has healed his trauma bond, if that does happen, oftentimes the person he's with is not the one he wants to be with. Because like a lot of men want is to be a bright, shiny new penny to someone else after they've shared their most vulnerable, weak state in their life. So please be careful of bonding through trauma and remember that genuine bonding happens through social activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, and most importantly, proximity, meaning spending regular time together to build the level of trust. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. 
All right, I think this will be a great place to wrap up this video. Uh, first off, if you have any thoughts or comments, please post it below. Please share this video. Uh, please tell your friends about Midlife Love Mastery. Send them to my website, jonathanaslate.com. Have them click that group coaching button so they can join our fantastic group. And I'm going to sign off this video as I always do. First off, giving myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Bear hug of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love. There's a teddy bear because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.